have um, Yin Starr here, who directs our study abroad program. And as many of you know, we do do a, an assessment after each fossil, and we ask for topic ideas. And last year, many faculty asked for more on study abroad. So that was a pretty big suggestion. And I think people were really interested in the coil that Dr. Dovish was doing and different opportunities to take classes abroad. And so I talked to Yin and said, I think we, you know, faculty are hungry for more on this. So she was really good and said, okay, well, I'll come in and talk about more. So here she is. <laughs> so thank you, Yin, for being You're welcome. Um, thank you all for taking the time to come and listen to um, us talk about study abroad. Um, for those of you who have not met me, I am Yin Star, I'm the director for study abroad. I am located in the library. Um, I have two guests here who will be talking to you about study abroad opportunities and how as faculty you can be involved um, in terms of um, poss the possibility of teaching in country for a short period of time. Um, the first person will be Ray Bates and he is the KEI Director of Institutional Relations. And I also have Shannon Gillen who is from API and she is the Institutional Relations Coordinator for the Mid-Atlantic Region. Um, before I start though, I would love if um, you can introduce yourself, um, what you teach or what you do on campus. Um, I, that would be great. Laura, do you want to start? Oh, sure. Sorry. Hi, <laughs> 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 pizza. <laughs> I'm so I'm Laura Redinger and I oversee the Center for Teaching and Learning here and also I'm currently the interim dean of the library and I also teach um, half time in the music department. And I'm Lois Jarman, Director of International Affairs. Hi, my name is Sam Green and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Political Science and Global Studies. Um, excuse me, Reserve the Money, the Department of Computer Science, and Math Money Center. Amy DeWitt, Sociology and Academic Advising. Heidi Hannon in English and Modern Languages. Uh, Yildiz Nerdinovsky, I teach English Composition. Shannon Holliday, Center for Teaching and Learning. Peter Vila, Environmental Studies. Laura Robertson, Biology. Eva Olson, Intensive English. Arnetta Fletcher, Family Consumer Sciences. Keith Alexander, History. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, can you? Matt Cushion, Communication Department. Okay, thank you. Where did you want to start? Sure. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ray Bates, and I'm the Director of Institutional Relations for KEI. Um, so I'm here today talking about KEI teaching opportunities, but also the ones through our partnership with the Global with the HEPC, which we call Global West Virginia Programs. Um, and uh, a little bit about KEI. Uh, we were founded over 20 years ago, and so what our focus is those students who traditionally have not studied abroad. So while we do have programs for students in the wars, but we also kind of focus a lot more on STEM professional fields, which is more common with majors here in West Virginia. Um, we've had, with our programs, uh, they're basically they're based at a, a regular university overseas, uh, and it's a lot like an exchange program, but we provide extra services that often are not available through an exchange program. So for example. Uh, all our programs have airport pickup, they have students to the contact director for emergencies, they plan cultural activities, uh, there's either we include a meeting or activity, cell phones provide excursions, um, and one of the big differences with, with our programs is that we try to keep our costs low. And so you'll find that we have about a third of our programs actually cost exactly the same amount as an in-state student here at Shepherd University. Uh, and for many of our programs, there's also internship options, you know, there's service learning, uh, there's intensive language programs, um, and one of the things I'll point out is that students here can use their federal and state financial aid towards our programs. So if you have students that are really looking for a semester option, we're a great value. Uh, and we also provide all students an automatic thousand dollars off the program fee that's advertised in our, on our website. Um, so you see we have, there are different locations, half are traditional, half are non-traditional. Uh, 
in the art programs. Um, we send a lot of students like to Thailand, London. So, we go. so it's, it's kind of all over. Um, and all of our programs are taught in English. So there's no language requirements for any of our programs. So, it's a little bit about KDI. Um, about, oh, what's this? Over two years ago, we started a partnership with the HEPC. Um, I'm from West Virginia. I knew the person who, like, started a conversation with the person who uh, used to uh, work at the HEPC. Um, and over time, we've developed a partnership uh, where basically we're trying to help a lot of people. Your school has like a but the other four year schools, their capacity was really low. You know, and so the idea of the partnership is to help expand study abroad at all the campuses. It just looks different at, at, at every campus. Um, and so for here, it's a lot with, you know, trying to do, you know, again, has been trying to find faculty to teach on our programs. Uh, it's more about helping with, you know, outreach and, and helping where I can. So, but like I said, policies and procedures are already in place here. So that was something that I didn't have to do with Shepard. Um, so you see, we've had several several like outcomes with our partnership, um, and the one I want to talk about today is our teaching opportunities. And so, I basically have a handout where I where the next four slides are on on the handout. And so we're going to talk about two of these. Are the first two would be for specifically for Shepherd students, and the third one is more of like a statewide program, and the fourth one is more. Um, uh, Coil options for like adding a, like a virtual exchange to your classrooms. So I'm also here promoting the, the uh, options of each PC as well. So, so with our our first model, where you actually can teach on one of our existing programs, this will allow you to actually propose a course. So if, and you choose one or two of like, your top two or three locations that we offer a program. So this is like teaching a program at one of our existing sites. And the idea is that you bring students with you to take your course that you're going to offer. And your course that you offer is open to all of our students all over the country, not just for Shepherd students. But students, that, that allows us the ability to help um, uh, share the cost. Because we pay for your stipend. Uh, we, we, you receive a $2,000 teaching stipend. We pay for $1,000 student recruitment here at Shepherd. Uh, we pay for your housing, we pay for your flight. And so by combining, allowing that, um, you, you provide us a new course that we can already offer on the program, but it also allows, you know, so we are able to recruit more students, but you're able to actually teach a class that you could, you know, that are just kind of designed for your own students, but it's just open to students from all over the country. Um, with this option, uh, if you typically need six or eight students, uh, to go from Shepherd to go with you. And so the minimum numbers are a little lower than with most customized programs. Um, costs, in many cases, are very similar. Uh, most of our programs in the summer are around uh, four to up to 8,000, depending on how long the program is. Some programs, they're typically a month, some are longer. Um, but so, like, this is a great value option for professors who may not want all the responsibility of known as administering a program. Because you, your job is to teach and recruit here on campus, that's it. You know, we have a program manager, we have on-site staff, their job is to take care of the student, the student life issues, like, and all the emergencies. You don't have any of those responsibilities. So this is a great option if you're starting out and you want to try an international teaching experience, but you don't want all the added responsibilities. But you have to be flexible with location. So that's kind of the pros and cons. Our second option is our customized program, and this is typically what uh, professors here at Shepherd are used to. You propose, you have a proposal where you want to go 10 days in London, and I want to do this, this, and this, and I want this included. We do provide those services as well. It's just that with our the location, it's usually based on our locations. If you're okay with something that's not intensely, like intense to travel, I think we're a good fit. If you're looking to travel to four or five different countries, I probably wouldn't recommend KDI because we may not have people in all those locations. So it really just depends what you're hoping to do and, um, and if we actually have expertise in that site. So with these, more responsibility, you're basically, we provide the services, but 
you have an added duty of responsibility as with any other faculty-led customized program that you already offer. So, you know, you work much more closely with Yen in that kind of developing that pattern program. So we host generally about 10 of these a year. Um, so some companies do a lot more. You know, we focus more on our, we try to focus more on our integrated model, just because then it, um, it also adds just more capacity for us as well. So. so our third option is the outcome of our partnership with the HUPC. This is like sort of a model where we combine the first model, our integrated option, with, and, and but it's something that you and two or three other colleagues at different HPC schools come together and you create a rotating teaching opportunity so that if there are, uh, for example, we're in the process of launching our French and language program in Paris. We didn't have a language program in Paris. So we're working with Fairmont State and West Liberty, the two French professors, who are also my primary contacts. They're working together to create a summer French language program for us. <coughs> and then we repackage as a global West Virginia program. The key, the, the nice thing is that every year, those committee members, you know, there's three, two or three professors, we take turns every summer teaching that same course. Um, and so it, it opens up more opportunities. And then you're also not just limited to recruiting here at Shepherd. You're recruiting from all of the HPC schools. And actually, most of the schools in West Virginia support this. So you can actually recruit even from like, if you have colleagues at MVU or Marshall or you know, West, Virginia, West Virginia Wesleyan, you, you can recruit. Because it's, it's basically it's a KEI summer program. They all use KEI programs. So you're just letting them know if you know somebody, you know, they're more comfortable to help recommend the program because they know that you're going to take care of their students. Although we, behind the scenes, we really take care of the students, but it's, like, it's sort of the best of both worlds. With this option, the HEPC will provide some travel funds, and uh, so they're helping, some, even if we don't get the, the, the exact number we need, the HEPC is helping provide some seed money. So that's kind of like the advantage of this, and it creates capacity, especially with smaller schools. So, um, but you still get paid by KEI, just like the first model, you still, same benefits. It's just that it's more of something where you're creating an ongoing project that every year you're recruiting for that same program, but you all take turns teaching on it. So, and our final option is where you, it's like a virtual exchange or COIL, and, and with this model, you're actually, you and a counterpart in another country, you come together and you, for, for like five or six weeks, you actually bring your students together through like a virtual exchange where you have them do shared assignments and it could be two classes that have nothing in common and or it could be two classes that have a lot in common. So really if there's, all, there's a lot of flexibility with this. It reaches, I, I know at Glenville State, like I have been really impressed by the fact that they have reached so many students, provided them an international experience that, they, that these students would, never, uh, would otherwise never have. And I think that's, I know that here it's starting to take, you get two, I think, COIL classes right now. I think it's a, a unique option. And the HABC actually provides a training program for this. And so if Dr. Gibbons, you know, she has a dual role now. She's also the inter director of international programs for HABC, but she also still works at Glenville. And so she, this, is her, this is something that she had started several years ago, this fellows program. So if you have interest in this, Definitely talk to her. She can explain this much better than I can. <laughs> but she has a whole training program. She has, I've done the training with, like she did the own training in Charleston. I went to it. And she does a really great job with this. And I think anybody who wants to reach the masses, this is a great option as well. Because it's going to reach students who would otherwise never study abroad. So, and that's my info. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, Megan. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you see something <laughs> Shannon Gillen. Um, as you mentioned, I'm the Institutional uh, Relations Coordinator for the Mid-Atlantic Region. 
Um, and I started with API in July, so I'm still brand new to this company. Um, so far it's been wonderful, and I'm most recently coming from uh, Clemson University where I worked for a few years um, with the faculty directed uh, programs there, and I worked primarily with faculty on developing their programs. Um, and I worked a lot with API uh, on those programs, that's how I got to know API so well, um, particularly with our faculty-led uh, international internship programs. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit. So I'll tell you a little bit about API and who we are. Um, so, API was founded in 1997 by four women who were dedicated to providing high quality and affordable study abroad programs and programs that they would want to send their children on. Um, we first began sending students to Spain and France and then have expanded uh, to Western Europe, Central Europe, Latin America, the Middle East, Asia, and the South Pacific, the South Pacific most recently. We send approximately 4,000 participants abroad every year, and we've sent about 35,000 participants since 1998. Um, we have a high school and gap year division that started in 2009. Um, in 2012, our teach, work, and volunteer opportunities were launched, and most recently, our experiential um, internships were launched in 2015. Um, we offer programs in 28 countries, about 50 cities, and we employ more than 100 people, um, both stateside and abroad. And I'll tell you a little bit more about our um, resident directors abroad soon. Um, these are our core values, and this is really what made me so interested in learning more about the company while I was at Clemson and eventually wanting to work for them. Um, after attending the API training in August, I was so impressed with how much they take to heart these core values. Um, and we offer high quality international programs in diverse locations with unique experiences. Um, as I mentioned, the teach work, volunteer, and international internship opportunities. Um, we provide opportunities for personal transformation and really encourage a reciprocal cultural exchange for students and faculty. Um, we emphasize that we like to stay small as we grow, so Jennifer Allen, for example, one of the founding mothers, uh, likes to call everyone who um, has participated on an API program, all of the API employees, uh, the API family. Um, and it is true, they do seem like a big family. Uh, genuinely care about each and every one of the participants and, and employees. Um, we encourage safe practices amongst the participants by providing detailed pre-departure orientation as well as on-site orientations. Um, we also pride ourselves on providing superior customer service um, before, during, and after the program, and um, just making sure that the students and you have everything that you need um, throughout the program. Um, we also are, we remain cost conscious and promote accessibility by providing um, a various um, affordable programs. Um, and providing a positive work environment for the employees. I can definitely vouch for that. Um, happy employees means we're going to do our job well. And um, Jennifer Allen definitely uh, likes to emphasize that and make sure we're all happy. Oops. So why should you partner with API? Um, we provide individual attention, including 24-7 emergency support um, from our highly trained on-site staff. We, as I mentioned, provide student support and faculty support before, during, and after the experience abroad. Um, we also, we really take to heart um, the evaluations that the students and faculty complete at the end of the program. And, um, yeah, we, we provide exceptional value with our programs when it comes to housing, excursions, cultural activities, um, and medical and life insurance and scholarships. We provide um, 
over $500,000 a year to our affiliate universities, uh, our affiliate partner universities, and Shepherd University is an affiliate partner. Um, and the average experience of the customized program management team is the tenure is five years, and which means you will be working most likely with uh, the same program manager year after year if you decide to continue your program. Um, API does not currently operate study abroad programs in any regions for which uh, there is a U.S. State Department warning. And we include medical insurance that includes um, medical evacuation in, uh, in the case of an emergency. So a little more about our health and safety. Um, we have an extensive emergency action plan that our on-site directors are um, very well trained to use. We require that every one, every one of our participants um, registers with the State Department Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. And what that does is um, everyone who is registered will receive an alert if there's an emergency, an international emergency. Um, API recommends that students use our Communications Abroad Google Form and that uh, faculty directors and their family and the study abroad staff and us, that uh, everyone has access to so that we know where they are at all times if they're traveling for the weekend. Um, we encourage <coughs> that everyone has a functioning cell phone while abroad so that and to exchange faculty directors and students should exchange their numbers um, just so that in, in the case of an emergency. Um, so a little bit about our on-site staff. They're phenomenal. You can vouch for that. She went on one of our programs to Argentina and met the site director there. And I actually just met the site director um, in Argentina, in Carmen. I met her in D.C. when she was visiting for meetings. And she is phenomenal, just genuinely cares about each one of the participants, as does every one of our regional directors, uh, or resident directors, excuse me. And they've all been with us between three and 21 years. So they're very knowledgeable about the host institutions, about how to um, serve students and faculty and make sure everyone has what they need, make sure everyone's happy. Um, I was really impressed. Actually, the other day I emailed one of our resident directors to see how a student, it was the first time that we were sending a student from a particular university to Barcelona. So I emailed the resident director there to see how they were doing, how that one student was doing, if he was happy, if he had everything he needed. And the director said, yeah, he's very happy. You know, last week he was sick, so we took him to the doctor. He got the medicine he needed. Um, and this weekend he's backpacking with some of his friends through such and such countries. So they're very in touch with students, which I really appreciate. And they're able to actually give you details rather than being like, yeah, I think he's good. I saw him the other day. But um, so I was really impressed with that. Um, these are uh, our program models. So first is the standard faculty-led. You provide the courses, you focus on academics, we provide all of the logistics. The second one is the host country faculty instruction. So you will go with the students abroad um, and observe the courses that they take. We can send you the CVs for um, the instructors at the host university so that um, you can see uh, the cell of the syllabi for the courses so you can see if they're up to Shepherd standards. Um, and we will, of course, provide all the logistical arrangements. And the most popular option is a combination of the first and second models. So you can teach a course and a host instructor, the host institution instructor can teach a course. Um, and it's usually like a language and culture course that they teach. Um, if that's what you want, but it's completely up to you what type of course you want the host institution to teach. Um, and you can also incorporate into an already existing model, an existing program. If you go onto our website and you say, yes, I want to take students to that program in the UAE, we can make it yours. We can also provide um, marketing materials for that program saying, Shepherd University in UAE, for example, um, just make it completely yours. And we're happy to provide um, yeah, marketing materials, come to campus and uh, do, you know, host informational sessions, do class visits, um, whatever you need for, from us for recruitment. 
And then the last option is traveling programs. So these will tend to be a little bit more expensive, but completely possible if you want to take students to the UK, for example, and teach a course in Northern Ireland, in Scotland, in Leeds, you can absolutely do that and we will provide all the logistics for that. And these are all of our services offered. Um, we also provide a faculty handbook, um, an on-site orientation handbook, pre-departure materials, um, everything that you need before, during, and after the program. And then um, to the right, there are some additional services available in select uh, regions, um, such as mobile phones, um, extra excursions, host lectures, etc. And then the program pricing will completely depend on the number of students. We usually require between 8 and 12 as a, a minimum um, of students, otherwise it will get much more expensive. Uh, of course, it include, um, It depends on what's included, and we're absolutely happy to help you work with a budget to see um, which housing options are less expensive, um, you know, transportation, excursions, whatever we can do to make your program less expensive, we're happy to help you with, um, as well as the number of locations. As I mentioned, the traveling programs will be a little more expensive. And um, yeah, there are no hidden fees. We're completely upfront about our fees and everything. Um, <coughs> there are no fees if the program is canceled, if it's not able to recruit enough students. And then with the process of developing a customized program with us, you'll go to our website, <coughs> um, You'll see over on the right-hand side, it says college educators, really small and yellow. Uh, you'll click on that and a little drop down menu will come up and you'll click on customize programs and then this menu will come up and it'll walk you through phases one through five, everything from program planning to program evaluation at the end. And these are just some of our professional affiliations. And this is my contact information. I'm not actually located in Texas. API is based in Texas. Um, I live in D.C., so I'm happy to make the quick drive over whenever you need me to. Thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for either Ray or to Shannon? Go ahead. Uh, um, Sam Green. Um, my concern in um, partnering with the abroad organizations tend to, tends to be the, the additional cost. Um, that gets put onto the students uh, as opposed to uh, study abroad programs that are involved more in house. Um, so I guess the question for that is, I, from my observation, most of the ones here are not involved in house. So, um, so I would say it depends what you want to add in. It's really what determines the cost. Um, most most of us, to be honest with you, company, our companies. I can. I'm just guessing. Most study abroad companies make really survive off our semester enrollments, and we really don't make a lot of our margins are pretty low when it comes to back to the program. So if don't, I wouldn't say don't make the assumption that we're making tons of money off back to the program. That is not the case. <laughs> I think it is our semester enrollments that cut this upside of everything. I think too though. Um, I think if you want to do a faculty program and you want to do it from beginning to end, meaning that you want you do not want to work with a provider, that means you will have to take care of the airline, you have to take care of the program syllabus, you have to take care of um, arranging transportation on ground, um, excursions, um, accommodations, and then meals. So basically you will need to have someone on the ground that can um, possibly help you. Like for example, for example, um, Amy Hampton and um, Keith and um, Dennis Barishaw, they're leading a, a group to, um, leading a faculty program to Cuba. Um, Amy and Dennis actually have um, contacts in country, so they're doing everything by themselves, but they are working a lot. So, you know, by having a provider, you know, it depends on the provider, you have to be, um, you have to be kind of, you have to compare prices would be the, the suggestion I would always say is to compare prices between several providers that can meet 
the cost of cost break for students. Yes, the cheaper it is for students, the better the better it is for our students. Um, but if you go with the provider that you've always gone with, um, that might help. But um, you do want to compare prices. Would be my suggestions. Um, unless you know you, um, unless you know, I think and Keith can attest to it. You know, you are doing a lot of the leg work. So when I was working at Clemson University with our faculty, we I tried to make it so that it was mandatory that faculty use a provider, mostly for the health, safety, and nursing management part, um, just so that you do have all of those on-site contacts there. That's a really important part of it. Um, and everything that Ian just said is just so much easier for the faculty in general. And Keith, do you want to add anything to? Well, I think that uh, Dennis or um, other colleagues would be a better, and Amy would be a better able to answer that because they're the ones who really put in the leg work. Mm -hmm. um, I've done it, I guess, both ways now, and it is a lot easier to have to go through a, a professional group. It is more expensive, so you, you kind of have to weigh out the uh, advantages and disadvantages. I know in particular Amy is working overtime trying to, yeah. trying to get this going, so yeah. you want to save yourself that. Yeah. I guess my advice is if you're looking at something non-traditional that where you may not have a lot of contacts or a lot of experience, if it's like a high, text, high context culture, like I would recommend using a provider. If you're feeling, if you're going to, to uh, <coughs> Ireland, you've been there, somewhere, you've lived there, or you feel comfortable, like, it's a different story. It really depends on the location. Yeah, it depends on your context. I mean, you know, if, if you know someone you know, has contacts, you know, in France, I mean, by all means, you know, you are more than welcome to put a proposal out, you know, saying that you want to lead a group, you know, to <coughs> France, and you know, you, you're able to do that, you know, for French um, culture and immersion. Um, you know, but um, my role here is really to provide the options for faculty to look at and to compare prices. So that's really where I'm coming from, um, that you know, we have providers that are partners with us that um, can give you these options. Um, so that is really what I'm here to help you do. Um, and I think you know, um, with um, KEI, I think that we, um, with, um, with what he's doing with um, with what they're doing with um, partner um, universities, I think there's a program in biology, isn't it? Isn't do you want to in Thailand? Yeah. To Ecuador too. Uh, we're, the uh, med schools in West Virginia are trying to develop like a health science program, a statewide health science program, and um, and so we do have colleagues who are you know who have students that are pre med or something in the health sciences. I know that you know that we're trying to find <coughs> partner schools. Because it needs to be, we need to involve HEPC schools in this process, um, and so we're, we, that's an area where we're trying to find the professors who want to really be like help design the course, also help recruiting every year, to get, you know, and then also help teach in that program every couple of years. If there's biology majors or anything like that, can um, you know, I be, I have information um, and I can pass to some of you, so um, come see me, or I can, you know, do that. So, if you're starting from ground zero with maybe an idea, um, do you all have, and you want to do faculty led, do you all have any type of uh, syllabi or course um, examples that we could use if we're exploring Absolutely. ideas? Are okay. they on your website or we would yes. still contact you for? We do have some on our website, and absolutely contact us, and I can put you in touch with our customized programming team that can send you all kinds of examples. Um, I was just telling Ian that I looked at our customized list that we're working on for 2019 and 2020. That's crazy. Um, but, and it's something like 225 customized programs. So we have plenty of examples, even just most recently, that we can send over. Yeah, when I was in um, Buenos Aires for my site visit with um, API, um, I met a colleague um, at the um, at UNC Chapel Hill, and she has a faculty that is going to um, Buenos Aires, I think, um, on on a program. And it was, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was art a little history a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. So um, it's the option is there, and you know, um, come see me if you're interested in the idea of um, doing a faculty lab program. Um, I have proposals um, that I can show you as well, um, you know, if you want to do it in-house. Um, it's just definitely um, a lot, 
a lot of work, um, I can walk you through the process as well. Okay. For the, uh, the ones that are kind of established before we roll into, you know, this is us from the ground up, uh, what, give me a sense of what a student's week is like, um, if they're in Paris or whatever, for one of these. How many hours a week are they in class? Um, I got what's the schedule like. So the same and number of contact hours. I mean, you know, when they're determining uh, with, with our programs, for example, like you know, the French and language program for Paris this summer, uh, the, uh, our uh, our host university is actually going to be teaching beginning and intermediate French courses. And then we also have uh, a Hippolyte from Fairmont State, who is a French professor, who is also going to be and also teaching the, the cultural course. And then she'll also be, you know, um, being there as, as a rep, overseeing those French language courses too. So would you say like Monday through Friday, you're in the class three hours a day on average? I would say that that's pretty typical. It's usually going to be like summer school year. So they're going to be fitting in, you know, four weeks, you know, a semester in four yeah. weeks. So it, it generally, like, you're, there's not a lot of downtime in the summer program. I mean, that's, yeah, <laughs> and that's kind of actually my concern to be honest is, and. To be fair, I'm not a language teacher, so I, I have less concern they learn a language than I'm more the cultural side of things. But um, one of the challenges I have with some of these is it, the model our department is used is we have a class during a semester and then we either take a trip to spring break or kind of at the end. And I like the fact that when we're on the ground, when we're in like Paris, like we're in Paris. Like we go to museums, we go to Versailles. And I'm a little bit, because it's, if I was sitting there for a whole semester, right? I think I'd be a little more comfortable saying go sit in the classroom three or four hours a day because guess what you got you know sixty to ninety nights in the yeah. afternoons. Whereas I'm a little nervous on the <coughs> three day ones. I don't know that I want them to spend as much time in class doing homework and things as they would just sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of my concerns at least. Yeah, depending on the program, um, the location, we can I mean really work with you on what exactly you want if you want just one day through. <laughs> Thursday classes and then have a long weekend for optional excursions or um, if students just want to travel on their own, that's absolutely possible too. I would say though, if you're using either of our programs where you're kind of building off an existing program, you you're kind of locked in yes. to what they're doing, right? You should yeah. make that assumption. Okay. Your course, if you're doing a week long public spring break or post semester mm -hmm. experience customized to your any company, mm -hmm. yeah, you can. Design that wherever you want, because that's a true customized program. Yeah. So, I, I, honestly, I, why would a student sit in for four weeks in a Shepherd class then? Well, I guess my sense <laughs> it's, is, it's summer outside of Shepherdstown, there's less exciting things to do than outside of class in Paris. <laughs> so, if they're in Paris, <laughs> if they're in Paris, like, I want them going to churches and museums and historical sites, whereas in Shepherdstown, I'm more comfortable saying, like, okay, who you decided to stay. Is, who says that's not their class activity that day? Well, I guess that's partially my question, is with these classes, um, when you say like, okay, so they're in class Monday through Friday, three to four hours a week, are they going to a room and sitting down and having lectures and having standard homework, and then they have to after class go finish their homework, okay. and so they don't have a chance to, well, I guess that's why I said, I'm, I'm coming from not a language perspective, I'm sure language is a, is a different thing, but from a cultural kind of introduction perspective, um, I'm just concerned, it, on the surface, if you take a full load of classes here in the summer school, you're, you're pretty busy, like just like going to class and doing homework. It's going to be two classes. Right. But in a, in a month, that's, you know, kind of, a, that's relatively, that's a full, like, load. So that's my, one of my concerns, at least from the outset, is that... If you're concerned about students with financial aid, they need to be enrolled in six credits. So that's, okay. you may not be aware of that, but they need, in order for students to be eligible for federal financial aid or Pell Grants, they need to be enrolled in at least six credits. Sure. So there's no, and if your concern is affordability and making these accessible to more students, you need to keep that in mind. Well, yeah, that, to be honest, that's why we do our trips. We teach our class and then we do yeah, our trips because then model. they've already it's paid their tuition. So model. I'm just trying to see, this is obviously a different model, but I'm trying to say, like, okay, here's what we've done. There's some weaknesses and some strengths. I'm trying to perceive on the other side and just kind of see. Honestly, that's a common model what you're doing. That's a really good model because you, you should be able to negate your, you, your yeah. costs because they're paying tuition. And that's right. a good model. If you can do that for your purpose, if you can do a post semester or, or a spring break, you eliminate you, your cost, you. You're the most expensive part of the trip. <laughs> so, hey, it's a good model. I mean, I'm just like, uh, yeah, I'll give you a lot of answers. I think that's a good model.
So I also had a question on the Global West Virginia program. So the, the, do I understand right, the expectation is this is going to be a course that's going to be offered every summer? Yeah, because it has to build, these things have to, like, the VHABC is going to help out. We're not going to build one program, but I think this is the idea. We, we start out slow. The first couple of years, they just, our expectations are low, but the numbers will be lower. But then it builds upon itself. Because you get returning students, and they can help recruit for the program. And so, I mean, this school has, like, you have something brought. You know, when you look at Concord, West Virginia State, it is not the same. It's just, they're at a level that you were 10 years ago. So, and they're working with demographics that are much more challenging, no matter what you think. They have much, their challenges are greater than student populations. So we, but it is an idea that if you want to work with colleagues, if it's something, you don't want to teach it every year, but maybe every two or three years, I think that's a good model. Um, I have a question about the COIL teaching method. Um, do you get partnered with a professor abroad, or do you have to have contacts? Do you know how that works? So, I know Megan will help, try to help you, yeah. but Yen will also help you with the Yeah, I'm the um, COIL coordinator on campus, and I can um, help you with that. Um, what I would like to see CORAL happen is that I would love um, for CORAL to take place um, for the semester and then culminate into students actually as the of them going abroad. That would be great. Um, because then you know you are then um, the students are then meeting um, other students that they CORAL with. Mm -hmm. And that would be really the best possible um, outcome. Mm -hmm. But um, I also know that some students who coil, um, from what I understand, they want to coil, but they actually do not want to study abroad. They just want the experience of um, meeting another student from another country. Mm -hmm. So, and that is there, and um, I am also open to that, um, because not I, I realize that not every really student um, want to study abroad. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very confident about that. I think that's something I just saw. I just was impressed by Glenville State. Because they send one, two, they have their one small faculty program every year. And they, they we, we receive one student from them on our regular programs. But they have, you know, several, I think it was like four or five classes every year that are doing COIL. Like, I'm just like, like that's, they're having an impact, even though it's all, it's, it's virtual change. But it's still like something that they students would never otherwise have from, and most of these kids are from you know, central West Virginia. I think that's, I'm just impressed by that. So, I would like to invite actually um, Megan um, Gibbons um, to do a coil um, to do a coil um, training um, for us. And I'm trying to find a time. And I think um, it's 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 hard with faculty, you know, um, teaching and stuff like that. But I'm trying to find a time, and that might be actually right after school ends. Um, um, and there's just a few days um, for me to bring her in for a teaching um, program, and that's what I'm looking at doing. So, yeah. How long would this be? The, the program? The, One day, two days? Um, the, the training? Or yeah, the, the training. Um, uh, the training, most probably, um, most probably <coughs> a few hours a day. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah. I've done it before. It's one day, and then people who really want to pursue it do an online training. It's like a, Take a class, like a blackboard class, and you do that process. But she walks through the whole process. I was, she, she is very organized, and she uh, has, she. Uh, I'm impressed by it. So. She's pretty good. So, any other questions? Forgot to mention that I also have these getting to know API booklets up here. I didn't pass them around yeah. because I didn't know how many materials people would want to carry around with them. But please feel free to take them. It'll just tell us, tell you more about us as a company and our type of programs and what we offer. I have one more quick question that I think kind of the answer to what I'll ask you. Um, uh, so I've been doing month-long trips across Europe, and my wife is getting tired of me leaving for a month every other summer. <laughs> do, you, do you have anything for families coming along uh, that you help fund that at all, or, or is it just the faculty? I think just the faculty members yeah. tend to she's welcome to. Come, um, sure. Yeah. If, if theoretically, say, I buy her airfare, can I get like a location large enough to like, if I had her and a child or something like that, or am I very just stuck in like some flexibility there? Okay. So, well, normally, with our, sometimes it's nice not to be in the same house. 
mean, especially if they're already supervised somehow or other way, you know, separating. Sometimes I just am sure you Sure. <laughs> I, I would say use conversation. But my, our There's own, possibilities at yeah, least. It isn't like, yeah, no. Our owner deals with all the faculty programs that so you would have a conversation with them. Yeah, we just tell the students that they can't have visitors in their housing, but we, I mean, faculty can absolutely have their family. Um, Amy actually, um, on her trip to Pueblo, Mexico, she brought her family. Yeah, she brought her family and her kids. Um, it, it gets a little complicated sometimes because you know the um, family, you know, it's it's they do things with us. Um, I, I actually went to Mexico with her, um, but it's it's difficult and it's workable. You just have to kind of just um, be on work mode and your family's kind of not, except for you know time. Sure. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Yeah, and from my perspective, the, the other side that that's what I was curious about is, is just like the funding, like reality is paying for my family to get over there. You know, it's one thing for so I just, like I said, I thought I knew the answer, but I figured I'd ask you just in case there were any accommodations for getting family members or dependents or things over there as well. Um, Ray and Shannon will be at the study broad fair tomorrow, so um, you know if you have more questions that you think about, you know, come see them. They are they are. Um, Four other providers that will be at the fair. Um, so please, you know, encourage your students to um, come to the fair um, tomorrow. It's um, 10 to 3 in the student um, center at the Ramsden. So please um, tell your students. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.